Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be doing a Discord JS v13 uh, update. Uh, I have a command handler for all of you guys. It's with slash commands, and we also have a verify command with uh, captcha. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy. And without further ado, let's get into it. So, um, I never really thought it would be this easy to actually switch to Discord JS v13. But essentially, the main changes that they made that you're going to have to make immediately is obviously the intents. I recommend using these intents. Obviously, there's going to be more depending on what projects you have. But for this one, we're going to need guilds, guild messages, and direct messages. Especially direct messages because we're going to be doing the capture verification in DMs. Then after that, uh, you're going to want to make a... Well, you're not going to make it, but you're going to change it from client on message to message create. They changed that. And also, we're going to make a client on interaction create. So, I'm going to start with the uh, command handler for the slash commands so we can actually get into the verifying captcha. Uh, so, in this video, you're going to be using this image for the background for the captcha, um, a text font, everything is going to be in the description. There's even going to be a guide on all of this code with uh, so you don't mess up all of your brackets. And all you have to do is just insert the code from the video, and then all the brackets are just done for you. Uh, and also, we have a paste bin for a little part of the video that might be a bit hard for some people to copy down so yeah okay so number one you're going to want to define a guild id and you don't have to do this but uh it's it's usually more helpful to have just um guild slash commands instead of global unless it's like a public bot or something um so uh define guild id and put a guild id in there which is yours that the bot is in uh then you're gonna fetch the guild id uh from client guilds then you're going to just define commands, and then depending on if you find a guild or not, then after that we're going to be uh, defining it as commands that are for the guild, or just for the entire client application. Then after that, if you haven't already installed FS, then you're going to want to do that. Uh, so terminal, a terminal, empty my FS and hit enter. Also, um, to upgrade to Discord GS v13, if you didn't know, all you have to do is empty an I, I mean, uh, npm uninstall then discord.js and then hit enter it uninstalls it and then npmi discord.js and then you'll have discord.js uh, v13 uh, latest version so yeah so now they have fs uh, we define our command handler which is just this folder then after that we loop through every single file in the command handler so it's each of your command files and then after that, we try and destructure a data object from the file. And if there's not, then uh, there's no data object. Um, this is so you don't have to immediately um, uh, put data objects in slash commands for all of your commands and just uh, run the slash command uh, command handler for the, the ones that you did convert. So next, if there is data, then after we're going to create a command using that data, and I'm going to show you how you can actually uh, use that. So then we're going to create a client on interaction create um, event. So when interaction is created, if it's not a command, then return. Uh, then after that, we're going to try catch just in case we can't find the file name uh, for the for the for the data that we used to create here. And then we're going to run it uh, with, and we're going to pass in interaction. And so yeah, and we const.log any. Um, errors and you can also keep your legacy command handler if you want I just got rid of it for now because I don't really need it so now um, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to download the two files that are in the description their cdn.discord app you can run it through like total I and virus total if you want on uh, check if they're viruses or whatever but it's just a PNG and a text file uh, I chose this text file because it's kind of harder to read and it looks more like It'd be for CAPTCHA. Couldn't really find anything that would, like, distort it. That's a text file. So, um, but yeah, then you're going to want to make a verified tries JSON. I'm going to quickly do this. Reset it. Uh, and you're going to want to all put this in just your default workspace, not in any folders or anything. Um, then we're going to make a verify.js file in the commands. Next step you're going to want to do is go into the description. Go and get the uh, pastebin for the bracket guide or whatever I called it. And just paste it in here and then i'm just going to go through it and you can you can basically get the code uh from the video and just put it in where the brackets are all there so 
First, we're gonna destructure all of this stuff from Discord JS. So we don't have to put Discord dot for each one of them. Uh, so then this is where the data object comes in. Um, you can like put like arguments or whatever. I'm not really too familiar with like how these slash command things are structured with Discord JS v13. I just like I just did like the bare minimum for this. Um, but yeah, so we have a name and we have a description. You can add arguments as I said. But uh, yeah, that's all we're gonna need for this. Now we're gonna be using module.exports. It's essentially just the same thing as exports start run or uh, or like exports stunt whatever. Um, but yeah, so you could just do exports.data is equal to data or data is equal to exports.data. Um, but we're just gonna be using module.exports for this because we have um, a lot of things here and it would just be easier to just keep it all in this one um, export. So the data will be set to our data object, of course. And then our run, when we do uh, file.run, it will just call this little function. And we're gonna pass an interaction, of course. So then we're gonna check if the interaction uh, interaction channel ID is the verify um, channel, because we don't want them doing it in like general or whatever. Um, then we're gonna define our row here. We're gonna add components. Uh, we're gonna add a button. We're gonna set the custom ID to the verify button, then label, click me to verify, success, and set the emoji. You can get an emoji ID easily. Um, I can't really think of it at the top of my head right now, but you could probably go look that up. Uh, but yeah, so you just put your emoji ID if you want an emoji. If you don't, then you can get rid of this. Um, next, we're gonna define our embed. Uh, so to, to verify yourself into the server, please click the button and complete the captcha. Uh, this is referring to this button right here, and we're gonna add this row with the button to this embed. Then if you want, I'm um, some like public bots or whatever do this, it's by clicking the button you are agreeing to be DM by the bot. I'm not sure if you have to put that if it's a public bot or not, but I mean you can if you want. And then we're gonna give them a little reminder that they need to turn on their DMs. Okay, next, the interaction.reply, then we're gonna send the, the embeds as this little embed and then the components we're gonna add this row with the button okay so now we're gonna create a filter for a message component collector so this is gonna basically detect if they click the button or not and then we're gonna run something if they do so filter is if the button ID is whatever you put here so if it's verify like we put it uh, and also the interaction user ID is equal to the person that that actually click the button. So then we're gonna create our collector, interaction.channel.create message component collector. Then we're gonna set a timeout for five minutes, which is 300,000 milliseconds. You could also use MS in this situation, but it doesn't really matter. And then in five minutes, we're gonna stop it because just in case they haven't responded in five minutes, we wanna close the collector. So then collector.onCollect, so if it does collect anything, um, just in case, again, I mean, you don't really need this. I don't know why I put this, but uh, the filter should have taken care of it. But if um, if it is verify the custom ID of the button that they click, then we're going to run the code. So we're going to delete our reply, which is this embed. Um, and then after that, we're going to uh, fetch the person that clicked the button from the guild. So we can actually send a DM to them. So then we're going to do a try catch over here. It goes all the way down here. Don't worry, you don't have to copy, I mean, you don't have to copy this down. You can just go to the paste pin in the description and it will all be there. Uh, and it should be like up to right here or so. So yeah, I'm not sure if this is in, but uh, yeah, yeah, so you just paste it in there. Um, in my little bracket guide that I put in there, it'll tell you that you should paste this source bin link in here. Next, after we created all of this stuff, um, then we're gonna actually uh, create a message attachment as the caption. We're just gonna call whatever you want. And then we're gonna create an embed. And we're gonna set the title to please complete the caption. We're gonna set the image to our caption that we just created with all this code. Oopsies. There we go. Okay. So now what's gonna happen is we're gonna send the embed and we're gonna define our answer as right here because I made a little ID here that will be the CAPTCHA um, and we're gonna just define it so I don't have to use it as Joe instead it can be something more viable like answer then we're gonna create another filter um, and the filter is just as long as the person who clicked the button is equal to the person that we're actually sending the embed to so 
now we're going to create our message collector in their DM so we can actually collect their answer and check if it's right or wrong. So, we have a little try catch. Um, and if the message.content uh, is equal to the answer, then we're going to stop the collector and we're going to give them the role verify. Uh, interaction.guild.roles.cache to find, and then you're just going to find whatever your verify role name is, or you could put an ID into there as well. And we're going to add the roles to the person. So, message.reply correct, you are now verified, and blah blah blah. Okay, so that's it for the, if they do get it right. If they don't get it right, there's a lot of other things. So, I basically made it so that if they get it wrong three times, then they get banned. If they get it wrong just like once, and it's not their third time, then they just get kicked. And uh, so yeah, this is the code for this. So we're gonna define FS because I'm way too lazy to actually make a, a Mongo schema for this uh, and actually run through that. So we're gonna basically define it. And if you haven't already made your verify tries.json, just put two brackets in here. And um, yeah, so just make that and you can define it here so it can actually read the file. So if there is no uh, data for that user, then we're gonna create it because they most likely did not run this command before and we're just gonna give them their three tries. Then I'm gonna write all of these changes. And now we're gonna check if the person has no more uh, tries left, then we're gonna stop the collector. Uh, this is the third capture you failed in a row because of this you have been banned from the server. So if the person is bannable, for example, if it's like an admin or something just trolling, we don't want that to crash the bot. So then we're going to ban them if it's bannable. And you can put a reason, uh, failed capture three times in a row. And the days part is just um, how many days of messages you want to delete. It doesn't really matter because I highly doubt they've sent a message, but just in case. So now next, tries JSON, uh, interaction.userID, and then we're going to give them the three tries just in case like a staff member um, unbans them and then we want to give them another try then we'll give them three tries back until they fail and get banned again. So after we've reset their tries when they get banned, we're going to return. Else this means that um, not only do they have data in there, um, but they also have some tries left and it's not just zero. And in this case we're just going to stop the collector and just kick them. So we're going to basically subtract one from their current tries. Uh, we're going to write the the final um, data into the file and then we're going to just tell them it's incorrect and it'll be uh, kicked and then just given how many more tries they have before you're banned and then if the person is kickable then we kick them again if it's an admin trolling or something we don't want it to crash the bot so i'll also make this a wait and this a wait as well because uh we want it to to 100 ban or kick or send the message um as a promise so can I catch any errors? Um, this looks like a lot of brackets, but then again, I made the bracket um, guide thing so you wouldn't have issues with this. Um, then we're gonna just uh, end the message collector, and uh, basically, if they don't, if they didn't um, send anything, then we're just gonna make sure that they didn't send any answer, and we're gonna tell them that, and then we're gonna tell them to run the verify command again. Then catch any errors that we have for for um, way back up there. Uh, this is basically if they um, click the button and they have their DMs off, it'll basically trigger this error and we'll just um, follow up with them and say that you need to turn on your DMs so you can complete the verification. And then, yeah, this, this is firmal just basically makes it invisible so no one else can see except for the person. They can dismiss the message or whatever. Uh, you can also console don't log error, it doesn't really matter. Uh, then we're gonna uh, stop the collector from the button. Then. This is where the five minutes thing is when we set the timer for five minutes. Uh, so, we're, so we set it for five minutes and at the end of the five minutes we stop the collector and then this will trigger this when it stops. And then on end if the collector.size is equal to zero, then it's been five minutes without response. Please run the command again if you want to verify in the server. Uh, again, if firmal true. And uh, else interaction to reply content, you can only use this command in the and then the verify ID channel. I don't not know. I just clicked my mouse. That was kind of weird. Okay. Well, um, yeah, that's about it. I'll just scroll up one more time in case you need to see anything. Um, I hope it's not too hard to copy all this down because again, I made the guide. Um, and yeah, I think that should be it for this. Uh, I'm gonna go test it in Discord right now on my own.
Okay, so now we're in Discord on my alt account. Uh, so we're gonna go into the verify channel and run our little verify. By the way, uh, when you run this, uh, let me actually run the bot. Uh, it might take a while for it to actually register as a slash command, so you're not gonna see this like um, immediately pop up as a slash command registered. Might have to wait like maybe 20 minutes or so. It's kind of dumb, but uh, it just is how it is. So now our bot is online. And let's send this through to verify yourself, blah, 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 same thing. So this is where the emoji ID comes in. If you want an emoji to come up with the button, then you can do that. We're going to click it, delete, sends us a DM, and ask us to uh, complete the CAPTCHA. I'm going to get it wrong, and then I'll get it right after I get banned. So we got kicked. We have two more tries out of our three tries. Let me just join again. Verify channel. Let's just do the exact same thing. Kicked, we have one more try. Again. Get it wrong. Now we have no more tries, so if we get it wrong the next time, then we get banned. Verify. Click, yep. And then we get it wrong, and now we are banned. So now if I try and join, and say that we're banned from the guild, but I'll ban myself really quick so I can get it right and show you that it verifies me. There we go. Verify channel. It'd be pretty funny if I get this wrong. Okay. GZ2VGZM. Yay, yeah, so now we're verified. Um, you can configure the the channel settings so everyone can type in here, but verified cannot. Um, and it should make it so that sure they can still see it, but they can't type any more in here and actually run the command to get verified anymore. So then, uh, as you can see, we join and now we have the verified role. So, um, yeah, that's about it for this video. Sorry, I haven't uploaded in like 10 years or so, but uh, here it is. Make sure to watch my Valorant Ace video that I uploaded like an hour ago or so. And uh, peace. Have a good day and happy new year.